Okay, let's start with Mike Gidney, who is uh, uh, Chief Executive of the Fair Trade Foundation. Over to you. Um, I just wanted to say um, a couple of things about, actually about what's happened this week. Um, like, like, like many of you, I'm sure, I've been trying to process what happened in Brussels yesterday. Um, the, awful, the awful violence um, and the destruction. But also underneath that, I've been trying to think through how, how we reacted. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I thought there were sort of two distinct camps emerging from the, the, uh, from the, the critique and the, and the response to what happened in Brussels. The first is uh, a, a, a sort of reactionaryism amongst the media. You know, the usual suspects started tweeting about how we weren't safe if there were Muslims around, we shouldn't be in Europe, we should have a fortress. The usual suspects were, were saying this was predictable and we need a strong-armed, militaristic, macho response. And then more quietly, more humbly, there were pictures of people standing in the, in the square, in Place de la Bourse, with their, with their candles and their tea lights and their flowers, holding hands or singing or just, just coming together. And I thought that was really instructive about how we face our common future as a, as a population. We could fight our way through, hack our way through the problems till we get want, what we want, or we could try and reach out there were amazing stories yesterday of incredible acts of individual heroism, tiny little things, people helping a stranger get rubble out of their clothes, somebody opening a door of a train for a pregnant woman to come out. Small acts of heroism which make me feel so incredibly optimistic about our future if we could only harness that. Now each of those camps, your radicals and your reactionaries have their own heroes their own names. The, the arch king of, of, of reactionaryism has got to be Donald Trump um, and everything he stands for, but he's got a hell of a following. But then we have so many other heroes of the compassionate humanitarian radicals. And for me, Safia is one of those. I've had the privilege of working with her for 15 years. Blimey, that makes me feel old. Um, but at every turn, I've seen nothing but a clear-eyed focus on the vision and on the mission for a fairer world in fashion. We need that kind of energy and that kind of compassion and dedication more now than ever. And what I love about this book is that it's, it's a partly manifesto, partly a how-to guide, how to live your values, how to be the change, and how we need to enlist others, politicians, companies, consumers, to do their bit. So I don't know about you, but I'd rather have a drink with Saf than Donald Trump any day of the week. <laughs> Thank you. Neither Donald Trump nor Katie Hopkins were invited tonight.